Hey y'all, my name is Leah Corder. I work as an application engineer supporting liquid and gas analytical products. Today, I'm gonna to talk to y'all about best practices for calibrating your pH analyzer. Performing a proper calibration is important because it compensates for the unchangeable effects that the process has on the pH sensor, such as an aging pH glass or a depleted reference sensor. So this in turn ensures that you are not unnecessarily replacing your electrodes too often. So the first thing you wanna do before you calibrate is to make sure that you've cleaned the sensor properly. And this applies to both sensors that have been installed for a while and also ones that are new out of the box. So we recommend soaking the sensor in five to 10% HCL solution for five to 10 minutes, and then rinsing with either tap water or demon water, and then patting dry with a paper towel. This will make sure that anything that has coated the sensor while in operation or is plugging the junction will be cleared and that'll allow the sensor to make a proper measurement. Make sure when you're cleaning the sensor, you're only rinsing with demon water and not soaking for an extended period of time because this will pull the KCL solution out of the junction and cause the measurement to be off when the pH sensor rehydrates. The second thing to keep in mind is that you're using the correct buffers. So this needs to be programmed into the analyzer before you calibrate. It's normally under the calibration menu and you can choose the buffer set that you're using such as NIST, DIN, US, whatever you're using, just make sure that it's programmed into the analyzer. You also wanna make sure that you're using fresh buffers every time as they can degrade if they're exposed to the air. So make sure that you're pouring fresh solutions every time and never reusing old buffer solutions. Lastly, during the calibration itself, we normally recommend customers do a 2.0 slope calibration as this is sufficient for most customers. During this calibration, you must always use a buffer that is close to 7 pH, whether that's the 6.86 NIST buffer or the 7.0 US buffer and this will create a reference point for the zero value. For your second buffer, we typically recommend using the buffer solution that's close to four, so 4.01 for NIST buffers or 4.0 for the US buffers. And this is because it's a little more stable than the alkaline buffers that have closer to nine and 10 pH. However, if your process has a very high pH value, then you can also use the alkaline buffers if you prefer that. Keep in mind that you shouldn't have to calibrate your analyzer too frequently. The ideal time between calibrations is about a month. So if you're noticing that you have to calibrate much more frequently than that, it could be one of two things. The first being that you might just need to clean your sensor more frequently. And we actually have um, several options for automating that process. So if that's something you're interested in, then feel free to reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to give you the options that we offer. The second thing is that it could be you have the wrong reference sensor for your specific application. So if you think that might be the case, reach out to us and then we, we'd be more than happy to evaluate your application and give you a recommendation for a new reference system. So just to reiterate, proper calibration of your pH system is very important. So make sure you're taking enough time to ensure that the process is carried out correctly and keeping these tips in mind that I just shared with you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at technical support. Our email is support at us.yokogawa.com. Thanks and have a great day.